The first painting I ever made was um, with shoe polish on my mother's kitchen floor and she just got, in those days they had these linoleum floors. That was a few years ago when Carol Fuhrman was three. She always knew what she wanted to be, an artist, and even got in trouble for doing her line drawings during class in grade school. And she said, you're going to the principal's office. So she sent me to the principal's office and he thought it was pretty cool. He said, you know, I do have to punish you, but I'm gonna have you give an art lesson to the class since you like to teach so much. I think I was in fifth grade. He said, but no more, no more figures. Mm -hmm. to do a dog or a cat. So I did a tiger. In high school, Carol started selling her work. And even though she was already a budding success story, her parents didn't like her plans to study art in college. They were so excited that I was an art, becoming an artist that they refused to pay for college and told me never to come home. Totally cut off by her family at the age of 18, that's when this brave woman got married, had kids, and still attended the School of Visual Arts in New York. I did continue to do it because I needed the income also. Yeah. And that's why I did illustration and drawings and paintings because um, I could, that line drawing really worked out for me because I started doing op-ed pages with line drawings of the New York Times. Eventually, Carol got hooked up with a job doing record album covers, thanks to a next door neighbor in her apartment. So she says, you know, speak to my father. He has a record company and maybe he'll give you some record covers to do and um, you'll make better money. So I went to speak to him and uh, he said, well, I have to t test you out. I'll give you a sample cover. Um, you're gonna do Hugo Montenegro. I'll give you the sample cover, do two flamingo dancers. If I can use it, I'm not gonna pay you, but I'll pay you monthly tuition. And you'll do album covers for me, and you, you know, as your, like your homework. Yeah. So um, I told my teacher I was really excited and my teacher hired two flamingo dancers and the whole class did flamingo dancers. He critiqued me. I turned it in, it was fabulous. They used it, it was line drawing. And because I didn't have time to really go into detail, like hyperrealism. And I did a lot of things. I did something for um, the Rolling Stones. I did Monkey Man as a line drawing. Mm -hmm. And um, I started getting a lot of jobs. She was doing so well, she graduated two years early. And the next step was for Carol to get her own art show at a gallery, which is harder than it seems. And I couldn't get a gallery. Here I was doing so great in college, they graduated me early, I was making money as an illustrator, but when I wanted to put my art in different, in different art galleries in New York, which has the best ones, they weren't looking at women's work. She changed what she was doing then. She put those illustrations on the back burner and started sculpting instead. I would cast like parts of my body, like from here to here, because then I could put my arm down and I could do the casting right on my arm. And I did a little bit of my hip, and then I had a, my girlfriend touch my hip, and I did a part of my body like this. Maybe a little risque at the time, but a friend in Fort Worth had a gallery and offered Carol her big break, finally her own show. I walked in, I was all happy, excited, and she says, I have some really bad news, but um, Fort Worth, Texas isn't appreciating this kind of art in the Bible Belt. You are a Jewish girl from New York, showing erotic work in the Bible Belt. I feel really bad, but we're taking the show down after the opening. Mm -hmm. Nobody went to the opening except the janitor. Another door slammed in her face. But like every great creator, a new inspiration came her way. I don't give up. It's just me, especially with the art, because I love art and it's my, it's always been my saving grace. It's always been there for me. Mm -hmm. The more I put into it, the more I get back. I said to myself, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna do sports figures. Everyone loves sports figures. Nobody's mm -hmm. gonna lock me out. I'll do a hockey player and I'll do a roller skate, or whatever I know I'm gonna do. One day I was sitting on the beach and I saw this girl coming out of the water and she looked so cool. She had water streaming down her face and she was walking like forward, like, like this. And I, I went like that and I could fragment her with my hand. I was only doing fragments. And I said, that's it. I'm going to do a swimmer coming out of the water, coming through the wall that hangs on the wall, like a painting, but mm -hmm. a 3D swimmer. And I did my first swimmer. She got another show, three weeks this time in New York. And the big break 
finally, on the last day. He says, I've been waiting for you like almost an hour. Uh, I was in the back, now I'm in the front. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, you kept me waiting, do you know who I am? And I said, no, who are you? And he said, I'm Malcolm Forbes. I said, uh-oh, what would, what would you say if I wanted to buy every single piece in the back room? I said, all 13 pieces in the back room? He says, I love them, every single piece. And that's swimmer over there. I said, that's wonderful. That purchased open doors, and Carol's been walking through ever since. Her hyper-realism sculptures are unique and groundbreaking. Most of them are epoxy with painted with lacquers, and the, the clothing, the, the skin, the accessories, everything is painted, even the eyebrows. But the only thing I add is eyelashes, yeah. sometimes a hair or two coming down. Mm -hmm. But there's no real clothes. Mostly they grow out of my experience. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the sculpture is going to look like. I know what it feel, what the feeling is like to, to persevere or to, to try to balance in your life or to try to um, meditate and be calm. You know, I can speak through my work because each of my pieces, although they're a swimmer, they're more than a swimmer. They, they look like swimmers, but they're basically stories about life and things I've gone through. Carol has revolutionized the industry and raised the ceiling for female artists everywhere. The millions of dollars in sales says one thing, but Carol says this. You don't know how long you're gonna live. Try to do something that you love. Um, you don't have to do it full time like I do, but if you don't, if you don't follow your dreams or do what you love, if you keep putting it off, you won't be happy. So you should try to you know, do that for yourself. And, uh, you never know. You never know. You, know, you could become an overnight success if you keep at it for 50 years like I did. <laughs> you got 10 more in you? I got 50 more. <laughs>